This is, this is very, very serious. He just told you, it's better for you not to know. Now that you know, and you're taking the time to learn, at least you hear in class or you, you're learning from some someone that's teaching you this truth, you held accountable. You really got to look at this serious because this ain't nothing to play with. It's nothing to play with. It's serious. And we need all the mercy and grace that we can get. Hmm. Look at uh, Matthew 12 and 43. Matthew the 12th chapter and the 43rd verse. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, when you come into the truth, you'll be, like you said, you'll be cleaned up. We just, we just showed you how, through the scriptures, how the word you are clean through the word. You know, the washing of water by the word. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. So he's walking around trying to find rest. He can't find none. Then he said, I will return to my house from which I came out. I'm going to return to that body that I came out. When he started dealing with this word and the laws of the most, I had to get away from him. I couldn't handle them laws coming into that body. I had to get out of them. But now, you done left. You like the dog that's eating up his own vomit. You like a nasty, filthy, but nasty pig that's wilding in the murk, eating out, eating, eating out of his feces and everything you can think of as slop. That's how he look at you. So he say, hey, you filthy again. You filthy like you was. Oh, let, let me see what he says. Then, then he said, I will return into my house from which I came out. I will go to that same body I came out of. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. The spirit ain't in him no more. The spirit of the most side of my side was having left him. So what is he? Empty, swept, and garnished. He ain't got no more the spirit of the most high and of my shaka shine. He got the spirit of the world. You know? He got the spirit of the world. He he following the system. He, he, been, he became from a sheep to a goat. That's what you gotta understand. Then go of he, this unclean spirit, and take it with himself. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. You know? He go and say, hey, man, look, I got a house we can go into. These cats more wicked than him. You think it was bad when he was, before he knew the truth. <laughs> then go of he and take it with himself. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Seven number of completion. A complete number of evil, wicked spirits, unclean spirits. That's more wicked than he, the spirit that came out of him, coming to the truth. And they enter in. They enter into this body and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. What he's saying, man. So, we got a choice. Choose life or death. Matthew 10, 32. Matthew 10 and 32. That life is lived forever and ever and ever. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him. Will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven? Here he said, Whosoever shall confess me, be, confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. So you confess to my Shekhar Shai before men, he's going to confess you before the Most High. It says, But whosoever shall deny me, before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Can you imagine a Mashiach Yavashai denying someone before the Most High? His only begotten Son? He's telling them, hey, they're nothing. They're nobody. You know, the heck with them. Ooh, that's deep.
That's real deep. That's really, really, really deep. <laughs> to be denied before the Most High. Go to Luke, the 12th chapter. I think I want the 7th to the 8th. Let's see, 7th, 8th verse. Luke 12 and 8 of it. Yeah. Luke 12 and 8. Also, I said to you, Whoso shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of the Most High. Hear that? Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of the Most High. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of the Most High. That's, that's not a good thing at all because hmm, that's not that's not good at all to be, be denied before the angel of the most you might take it lightly if you want to but you better understand something in Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28 now you deny before the angels of the most high listen there be spirits these are angels that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes, sore punishments. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. The Most High made everything through a Mashiach Yahusha. Tell you that in Ephesians 3 and 9. Fire and hell, famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. You say, he not, he, hey, you ain't confessed before the angels. Hey, you the enemy of the most high, you was worldly and all that. Shoot. You want to be in this world? You want to you follow what he's had you to follow for all this long time? Do you want to go out there and follow the world or system? You already said you'll get a complete number of spirits <clears throat> to enter into you. Seven number completion. You know, who knows? It might be seven. It might be like Legion was 2,000 in one man. Evil spirits in one man. And the Master Shah had them go into the pigs and run down the hill and drown. But these are spirits of the most high. Angels of the most high. That are created for vengeance. What are they? Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. Because you wicked if you ain't you ain't confessing Mashiach El Vashai, about shovel Mashiach El Vashai, you wicked as far as he's saying. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth. You hear that? These spirits of vengeance, these angels of vengeance is right here on the earth. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. They're going to do just what the most I want them to do. They're not going to transgress his word. So, understand, overstand this. So, it behooves you if you've been called to stay in this truth. Keep your mind on this word. First John two verse three. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So I don't know what they read in the churches. <laughs> is it just how you know him if you keep his commandments? 
he that says I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of the most high perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Hear that? With Mashiachim. Remember that? And Mashiach is the most high. That's how we know that we are in him. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. He didn't, he didn't break any commandments. He was perfect. That you know we could be perfect. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye have you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. See, the ignorance and the not knowing the confusion is supposed to be past. And the true light now shineth. Do we know that light? Proverbs 6 and 24. So I mean, Proverbs 6, 23 is the, the law is light. The laws of the Most High is light. This hip talk. He that saith he is in the light, he's keeping the commandments of the Most High. He's keeping the laws of the Most High. And hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. This was, we started with the love, love that neighbor, right? You say you in the light and you hate your brother, you in darkness, ignorance, not knowing, confused, even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. See that? And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. So all you that's got a problem with your brothers, Israelites, man, you ain't, you know, you, you're not in the light. And you can't let nobody take you into darkness. That's why he says you're supposed to deal with evil for evil and railing for railing. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness. You hear that? You hate your brother, you in darkness. Ignorance and walk up in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth. You don't know where he's going. Like a blind man. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. And most of us say, that's what he wants. He wants people to be in darkness. Some people, they they were, they, like he tells you when 2nd Ezra was 9 22, it said, Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. People are born in vain. And let my grape and my plant be kept, for with great labor have I made it perfect. See? But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth. Don't know where he going. Because the, that darkness has blinded his eyes. The darkness has blinded his eyes. Why I said in verse 9, he that says he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. I like to what that's written. You hate your brother, you in darkness even until right now. This day. Look at um, 2 Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. We're going to read from 9 to 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all the seemingness of unrighteousness in them that perish why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, that's why he said that. They're going to perish because some of you are born in vain. Like I said, the second verse 9, 22. But even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Remember Satan showed Hamashiach Rashad all the kingdoms of the, of the world and the moments of time said all could be gone if you do what? Bow down and worship me. That's what they're doing. Superpowers of the earth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. See that? Lying wonders. Lying. 
and you wonder about these lies. Everybody caught up in these lies, believing what they say, but they lie. They lie from the womb. And with all deceitfulness and unrighteousness, that unrighteousness is what? Not following the laws of the Most High. And them that perish. So you want to be unrighteous, you're going to perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. You receive not the love of keeping the Most High's laws, such commandments, his rules and regulations, that they might be saved. Let you know, like we read in Baruch 4 and 1. You're going to come to life. You leave them, you're going to die. Period. That's what he's saying. So, And for this cause, the most I shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You know? For this cause, you want to follow the system, all the things that's been set up in these different religions without doing your research to find out what it is that you really believe in. Most I said, for this cause, the most I shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. You hear that? Most I say he send you strong delusion that you gonna believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You don't believe that we under the law, statute, commandments of the Most High, you are gonna be damned because you have pleasure in unrighteousness because you're not doing what's right. You're not gonna follow our custom. You ain't gonna follow uh, the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws. You're not gonna do that. Therefore, you're gonna be damned, as it says. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. And the truth is defined once again, one Psalm, Psalms 119, 142. That righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. The most high's law is the truth. First John 2 and 18. First John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, anti Mashiach, shall come. Yo, somebody's gonna be a Antichrist is coming, Antichrist is coming. There's many Antichrists. Many anti Mashiach against him. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that anti Mashiach shall come, even now are there many anti Mashiachim, <laughs> whereby we know that it is the last time. <laughs> the last time. You know, they were they were with us, right? And they went out, remember we told you the a complete number of demons gonna you're gonna go get seven other spirits worse than them. They're gonna come and dwell in them, it's been worse than them. And when he first came in, had that one demon went out and got a complete number of demons. That's what I say. They went out from us. Verse 19. But they were not of us. They left the truth because they were not, they not weren't, weren't part of us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. You know? They'd have been us, they would no doubt continue with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. See? They went out because it was manifest that they were not all of us. They were not part of us. St. John 16. Oh, we getting it right. We're going to get in order. Or we got to deal with the most high. St. John 16 and 12. I have yet many things to say to you, but ye cannot bear them now. See? You see, he got many things to tell us at the time he was in the flesh on this earth. He said, but you cannot bear them now. See, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, when the spirit of keeping the most high's laws, that's why so I say, I am the way, the truth, I'm a way to show you how to follow the truth is the laws of the most high is going to lead to everlasting life. Say John 14 and 6. See, how be it when he, he, a lot of y'all be trying to say, they, the brothers trying to say the Holy Spirit is a woman. He, the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit. It's come and say he. I believe in my shout, I don't believe in else, nobody else. You could say, you know, wisdom is, they say, is a she, but this, the, the, the Holy Spirit is defined. We'll go there for the definition of the Holy Spirit. You'll see what it is. It's more than just that. 
Look, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He speak. He. Not a female, but he speak. And he will show you things to come. Prophecy of things to come. He shall glorify me. He, again, not her or she. She shall glorify me. No, it says he shall glorify me. For he, again, shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while ye shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father. So he said a little while ye shall not see me. Right? And again a little while and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father. So when he went to the Father, he told him I would not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's why he said a little while you're not going to see me. A little while you shall see me. Because I go to the Father. And they seen him win in Acts the second chapter. When the Holy Spirit came upon them. And from that point on, they was able to go and deal with the wicked Israelites and other nations like Paul's job was. You understand? Paul was a rugged cat. That's why both sides probably chose him. Diligent. And going against all those when he was Saul that that called on the name of Bashom, my shock, that was shot. Put him to death. You know, he was going out looking for people calling on the name of the Lord and Savior. We want that spiritual power. I want you to follow the, these people. Double honors to the chief priests. Double honors to the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all of these. Ones that put them to death. Follow them. Don't have the spiritual power that you have. By some of my shock, I was shot. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. So they ain't want to have that. They want to follow man. No different than it is today. Uh... Let's look at uh, St. John 14, 25. St. John 14 and 25. I'm just about finished. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, by Shema Mashak Yavashai, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. See? He's going to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, or your mind, the way you think. You're going to think different. Whosoever I, I mean, excuse me, whatsoever I have said unto you, right? So we got to find this Holy Spirit so we can smash all this. She is, she is the Holy Spirit and all that. No, that's not, that's, we just seen it said he. Now, if y'all seen she, let me know. I know I could, I could barely see. I could see pretty good though. But uh, if y'all seen she, Shall bring all things to your remembrance. Let me know. I seen he. Let me know though. Listen. Isaiah 11 and 2. And the spirit of the most high. Shall rest upon him. Spirit of wisdom. They saying wisdom is the, is the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom. They go wisdom right there. The wisdom is a proper application of knowledge. The spirit of wisdom. And understanding. See. Hold that. Get Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom, which is the proper application of knowledge, is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Get the proper application of knowledge. But with all that getting, get understanding. Right? So now we're defining the Spirit of the Most High, which is the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 11 and 2. And the spirit of the Most High, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter, shall rest upon him. Talk about it, Mashiach Yahushua. Spirit of wisdom, proper application of knowledge, that's wisdom, and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might, power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Most High. That's the definition of the spirit of the Most High, right there. Now, as I read, the Spirit of the Most High, as I read Exodus 15 to 3, the most, the most High is a man 
of war. The Most High is his name. So the Spirit of the Most High is going to be a man. And the Mashiach El Shai, who went to the right hand side of the Most High, he went back, he prayed, and he go back to the to where he was at in the beginning with the Most High. Look at uh, verse 6. Exodus 15 and 6. Thy right hand, who is the angel of the Most High, the spirit of the Most High, who is the Mashiach El Shai, as the angel of the Most High in the Old Testament. Thy right hand, O Most High, is become glorious in power. <laughs> Thy right hand, O Most High, have dashed in pieces the enemy, because he's called the destroyer. Oh, yeah. Verse 12. Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. See? Understand this. Real quick. So you know that's in Exodus, right? Go to 1 Corinthians 10. Prove it was him. Scripture says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, prove all things. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Moreover, we proved that also Mashiach that was shot. That right hand. Spirit. Matter of fact, well, before we go there, we ought to go and show you that where he where he's at, where he went back to. Go to Acts. We want to a new Bible. Praise the Most High. Um, look at uh, Acts 2 and 33. Well, let's read verse 32 so you know it's talking about a Mashiach of Shai. This is Mashiach of Shai had the Most High raised up. He raised up on the third day. There, where, where uh, we all are witnesses because 500 or more men seen him walk the earth for 40 days. And it tells about, you know, in Acts 1 and 6, what they said to him. He'd been on the earth for 40 days. They asked him, they said, when they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach, I was shy. Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the kingdom coming to the Israelites. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father, which is the Most High, have put in his own power. Only the Most High know. Right? So he told them, But ye shall receive power, that spiritual power, when? After that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, that's northern Israel, and unto the utmost part of the earth. Because they couldn't go. To Samaria. He told them don't go to Samaria. Because they weren't equipped to go to Samaria until they received the Holy Spirit. That's why going to uh, Acts 2 and 33. For 32. This is my second shy have the most high raised up. Whereof we all are witnesses. We just read about what they said to him. After he had walked the earth for 40 days. Verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of the most high exalted. See? The right hand of the most high exalted. And having received the Father, received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. See? So, in the, you read Acts the second chapter, that's when he said, I will come to you. So, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. That's when he came, as the Spirit of the Most High. So, St. John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, and we define, the definition of the Holy Spirit is defined in Isaiah 11, chapter the second verse. He shall teach you all things, teach you all things. You're learning and bring all things to your remembrance, to your mind, the way you think, to your brain. Whatsoever I have said unto you, see, whatever he said unto us. 
Ecclesiastes 3.15. Ecclesiastes 3.15. And moreover, I saw under the sun a place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and a place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. You know, everywhere we are. Moreover, I saw under the sun, under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Iniquity, wickedness, the same word. Where the place of judgment was, wickedness is there. Place of righteousness where we are trying to find our way into the kingdom, being righteous. Wickedness was there. I said in my heart, said in my mind, the most I shall judge the righteous. And the wicked. There is a time. There for every purpose. And for every work. Ecclesiastes. 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion. Of the whole matter. Fear the most high. Be afraid. Be scared of the most high. And keep his commandments. For this, fearing the most high and keeping his commandments, is the whole duty of man. You hear that? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high and keep his commandments. For this, fearing the most high and keeping his commandments, is the whole duty of man. Now, what it gets that you ain't got to keep his commandments? He said, fear the most high and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Listen. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. That's everything that we have done in these mortal bodies into judgment with every secret thing. When we see the secret things too. Anybody get away with nothing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Oh yeah. So that's why it behooves you to take heed, change, become a new creature, be born again with this word, of wisdom, become a new man, become a new woman. We gotta get better. That's all. We just gotta. We, gotta, we just gotta get better. That's all. Simple as that. Cause we got next forever and ever and ever. But we gotta work toward that. And if we work toward it. We have an opportunity to see the kingdom that's prepared for us. Shalom.